Um, I believe, have you ever read a comic book? Yes. Yes, okay. I believe that comic books actually address having special knowledge and have special powers much, much better than religions do. I think that they actually get to what are the moral issues and things. So in comic books, um, it never works like religion does, right? And so in comics, and I would say that the comic books are more true to life even, right? So how does that work? Well, in the comic books, the people that have these special powers actually use them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they don't actually sell them to people for a little bits of money here and there. They don't, they don't pretend to use them. They actually use them. And they struggle uh, with the moral issues involved in whether they should use them and when they should use them and these sorts of things. And these are the big, big themes in these superhero comic books. And they use them to fight crime or save the world or help people. And they struggle with issues of personal gain and, gain and whether or not they're using those powers for themselves or for others and how they best use them, you know, all these things. So th this is really what it would be like if, if there was special knowledge or special power. Yeah, so it reminds me not, not only of the whole um, many people who, who claim different psychic powers, the ability to talk to the dead or, or predict the future or find whatever. Um, all of a sudden, when put to the test, they can no longer demonstrate their power. So we got a, we got a problem there with the efficacy of their claim. Um, but go, going to the comic book things, would it be morally unjustified for, let's say, Spider-Man, since he seems to be the favorite on the show? Um, right. You know, like... It allowed his services to corporations who needed protection. No, I don't have any problem with that at all. He's putting his, his, his uh, powers to ability. It's honest work, right? But what if Spider-Man started a monthly subscription service where you could pay $50 a month, and as long as he wasn't busy with something else, he might swing over and protect you from something if it went wrong. Now you're getting closer to what these scamlets end up doing, <laughs> where uh, they promise something, um, but it's not without its hitches, and it may not come true. And if it doesn't come true, it's not the person doing the scam who's at fault. It's you, m m most of the time. Occasionally, it may be God decided not to, to do this, but usually that's because you've done something. Um, and, and so that's not any different from, you know, I would have loved to come and save you from those, from those muggers, but I was stopping a bank robbery downtown, and I can't be at two places at once. So, I mean, we couldn't honor your request this time. Maybe next time. Keep, keep, pay, keep yeah, the money flowing. Keep, keep, keep it coming. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what the, these scams end up doing. Yeah, and, yeah. and granted, um, you say, well, I don't have a monthly subscription. Oh, really? Um, I think if you look up Tithe, oh, sorry, that's a weekly subscription. Um, <laughs> Shoot. For people who don't know, tithe means tenth. Yes. And it's, it's basically this, uh, this supposed obligation that you're supposed to give a tenth of your income to the church that you belong to. And it's, and it's changed in meaning over time to mean just your, your <laughs> to, to duty. To mean 20% sometimes. You had your duty to, to pay the church. Yeah. Um, there are a lot that run with so. this tithe plus an offering. And, you know, that's the prosperity gospel, at least within Christianity, is backed up. Uh, by biblical passages, and I'm not, not going to find it, but if, if somebody in the back room wants to find it um, about casting your bread upon the water and it's going to return on every wave, basically you're going to get threefold, sevenfold, depending on whatever. And they take this, and which I would think could be an actually uh, true and beneficial idea if it's viewed as a general, view, general rule of thumb about how you treat people that there's no guarantee that if I'm friendly to people, they are going to be friendly to me. There's no you know, n n cause and effect relationship there. But we know, as a general rule of thumb, that if you are pleasant to people, they are more likely to be pleasant to you. And that if you live your life, uh, you know, being, for the most part, morally correct and, and caring and, and uh, kind to people, that you are more likely to receive those benefits and you may get out, may get back more than you put in. Not necessarily threefold or sevenfold, but to take this and spin it in a way where, you know, it says right here in the Bible, and therefore, if you send me a check, I realize that somewhere out there there's a little old lady who just got that $1,000 Social Security check, 
and you're thinking, what do I need to do with this? I need to buy groceries. I need to do this and that. But if you actually send that in to me, God has told me that the sacrifice that you make will be returned to you tenfold. <laughs> and I say it with a straight face. Yeah. Yep. I, I've seen, I mean, there's video footage out there. There's a lot of desperate people out there that it's want that to be true. It's not just them asking for money. You see, look at some of these shysters, and they will flat out say, they'll make a claim about a little old lady with a social security check, because guess who's mostly watching? And when they make a claim like that, maybe it's right for 50 different listeners. Or and thousands. each one of them thinks that he's talking to them. That he's got a special word of knowledge from God about them and their check that they just received. Uh, and if you get more specific about it, like if you know what the standard Social Security check is, you don't have to, you know, don't round it off. I know that in Detroit right now, there's a woman who just got a check for $850. You, you do something like that. If you have your show broadcast to enough people, some of the crap you fling is going to stick somewhere and you get money for nothing. Well, these are unverifiable claims. No, nobody in the audience can verify this claim. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's, that's the, how it works, right? But, it, but he might be convincing, he might be believable, he might have a lot of charisma, and people buy into it. And they don't realize they're being taken in. So it's, that's why they call it a con game. It's confidence, right? You've earned the confidence of these people and they're, they're giving you money. Oh, uh, somewhere out there, I'm, I'm getting a word of knowledge from Darwin. <laughs> yeah, talking to the dead is another there, good one. It's like <laughs> there's an there's an atheist who's viewing this program. Your name is your name is Bob, and you or, were or Robert or, and you or were, Fred. Well, <laughs> no, your name is Bob. I mean, you could go by Robert, but you were either in a car accident or had a very close call with a car accident uh, two two three four days ago. Um, uh, Darwin told me to tell you that you need to email me and let me know if I got it right. <laughs> I don't need your money. I just want to make the point. We'll see how many listeners we got. I bet I get one email. But, you know. Yeah. Car yeah. accidents are, are, are common. And near misses, way more common. And once you extend it out a few days, a few weeks. Oh, sure. Anyway. I mean, people don't realize it's like there are, what, 6.7 billion people on the earth and one in a million things happen daily. You know, it's, it's, it's ho-hum. That's, that's small, small well, potatoes. And, and <laughs> you know, within specific societies, our lives are, are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. You know, people generally get up, go to work, eat, go home, watch TV, read the news, surf the net, go to bed. Maybe if they're lucky, they get to have sex. <laughs> um, then there are a number of common experiences that occur to people. You have car accidents, near car accidents, you know somebody was in a car accident. I mean, there's a reason why there's a freaking insurance company for automobiles, and that's because this is common. So saying something like that, I mean, it's, it would be more surprising if I, w if I had not just described somebody than, than that I did. But.